The Trickster class in Dragon's Dogma 2 is often called the most boring class or vocation, but if you play it under level and with the correct comp, it's actually really fun and challenging. You can start battles between titans, you can earn 50,000 gold in a single hit, and you can buy enough time for your team to bring down the heavens on your enemies, but this class is not a hack and slash. You know, you have to be a little tricky, a little deceptive to make this work. In this video, I'm going to share everything I learned through my playthrough of playing the Trickster. I started off with only wizard classes, mage, sorcerer, and then trickster to see how that whole line progressed. And even after a hundred hours, it was still incredibly fun. Feel free to jump along in the timestamps below to find a chapter or topic that interests you most. Otherwise, I'm going to show you how to unlock this vocation, break down all the abilities, give you little tips and tricks on how to best use them. Then I'm going to give you my suggested setup and pawn allies to best use a composition around this class or vocation. And then I'm going to show you some really satisfying plays and how to do them. So let's jump into how to unlock this class. You can find the Trickster Maester in Bak Batal at this shrine. Just by showing up, you'll be granted the Trickster Vocation. You can access this pretty early actually in the game, taking an ox cart from Vernworth to the rest checkpoint town. Then I would suggest smuggling yourself via an ox cart through the gate, and then you'll have to fight your way through to here at this uh, shrine right here, and just speak to these uh, Arisen. She will give you the vocation. I would then also suggest going around to the side, climbing up this ladder, and then you'll find her actual form in the front. And this will actually give you the master teaching, uh, the master uh, skill right there. So you'll be able to use that pretty much right off the bat. Then push to the city, buy a house. This will grant you a residence permit, which will allow you to go back and forth between the two countries. Change your vocation while you're here, and you are ready to experience a difficult class. Having to rely purely on deception and pawn AI can be a challenge early on before you're leveled up. So let's jump into the vocation, starting with the basic attack. So we're here with our Arisen. We have our three sorcerers. Yes, three sorcerers. I'll get more into why I set up my comp that way, but the basic attacks. All right, so when you, when you swing your sensor, that's the weapon for the trickster, it creates a cloud. And this cloud really just attracts attention to your trickster. And, and the main purpose of us is just to draw the attention of the enemy and let our pawns do all the other damage but we can do it in some pretty cool ways. And early on, you're a very squishy unit. And, and once you die, your pawns are gonna die. It's just gonna end poorly for everyone. So learning how to, to draw their attention effectively is a key part. Um, the auto attack damage is incredibly low. You don't try to go hacking and slashing. You're not gonna do much damage there, but depending on your, your weapon that's equipped, and specifically the Whimsical Daydream. You're gonna get this from the Sphinx quest line. If you need help, go watch a guide. It's quite intensive. It's actually quite hard to, to solve too. But uh, if you do get the Whimsical Daydream, it's got a really cool sub feature. And I would suggest reading all the weapons, all the armor you have, they have little hidden features. And this one right there, it says in the last line, it's bearer's coin purse swells with every strike. And so whenever you hit, you actually gain a little bit of gold. So this is what makes it kind of fun to use as a, a side thing. Like if you if you're if you're free, you can just go and auto attack to get a little bit of gold. Every swing is ten, hundred, or thousand gold, and then I think once per game, once per playthrough, you get a fifty thousand coin strike, which is huge. It felt so cool. Like what? That was a fifty thousand strike, or it's probably just a really low rare uh, strike rate. But either way, really cool when it hits. Nice little spike of dopamine. So definitely do that if you can. But that is the main purpose of your auto attacks. Now, your triangle isn't like a heavy attack or anything. It is an effigial incense. And now, this is the bread and butter of this class. You're going to summon a clone. And so, its health is based on your magic. So, the higher your magic, the more health you're going to have. The strength uh, applies to a, a amount that it's going to draw enemies to it. So, the higher your strength, the more enemies are going to come towards your clone. And you want both high, obviously, but really I've never had a problem attracting enemies to you. The only problem, only time you're ever going to run into an issue is with ogres. Uh, if you have a female in your party, they will uh, naturally just go for them instead of your clone or you. So make sure that uh, you're conscious when you're going against ogres. But basically you're going to press triangle, you're going to summon it. You can press triangle again to snuff it out. Be careful. Like when I was first learning this class, I snuffed out so many times and it does take a second to summon. And that is when you are most vulnerable. You're always going to want to have it summoned. And then what you do is as you're running around exploring, you can press R1 to summon it to you. And so you kind of just keep summoning it to you. 
but you have to beware if you don't summon it to you. You could also just hold R1 to, to keep it with you, but if you don't summon it to you, eventually you're gonna get so far, it'll actually die, and you'll start to see its health will start to decrease once we get far enough away. Hopefully we get it far enough away to trigger that effect. Uh, yeah, you can see it start to decline right there, but if you just R1 now it's to you, but it is low health, so typically if you're safe, you're, you know you're in a good spot, I snuff it out and then make a new one. And that's typically how you have that clone always ready to go because you're going to be making some plays. And if you play League of Legends, it's kind of like LeBlanc or Shaco. You're trying to use this to, to take the aggro for you and your pawns. And it is a, a really fun way to play. But so that's the main purpose there. And there's one other really cool trick with this once you uh, level your vocation up a little bit. And that is the enthralling aroma. So if you hold R1 and then you press triangle, it'll cast it out. Now, this is a really short range. And uh, if you really like this, uh, you can have, there's another ability, which I'll get into in just a minute, where it goes further. But what this does is you cast it and it'll attach to whatever enemy you send it to. That enemy will then be attacked by any enemies around it that see it and are, are attracted to it. So you can actually use this to, this is your offensive way to play the game. And so you send it at the enemy and then you just watch the enemies just tear it apart. Uh, sometimes they just run away because they know they're being attacked. It's crazy. It's funny to watch. But you have to be aware, once you send this to that one unit, that unit's no longer being, no longer attracted to the clone, so they're gonna try and attack you. So you just have to dodge that single unit that's now free. So as long as you know how to bob and weave, you know, break break their legs, break their ankles, you're gonna be good to go, but that's what you wanna do to kind of make it through. And that, that's the general kind of way that you're gonna go into battles. So let's go ahead and jump into a fight right here. I just told my pawns to wait so I can show you guys how it kind of works in here. So you're gonna be in here, you definitely wanna have your incense already summoned because they'll come on you. And then you just want to keep pulling it towards you. Keep the aggro on your clone. Do make it dodge though so it's not taking any damage. And you can kind of last forever just by playing and juking these guys out. And as long as you know generally when they're going to attack, when they're going to connect, you kind of pull it away and you're going to be safe to go. So they just keep missing easy day. Now if you want to try and play the, the, the more uh, aggressive way, you can then summon your shroud and send it out using that R1 and then triangle. And then watch them just start fighting their own guy. But remember, there is one that will be chasing you now. You just gotta be able to kind of juke him and you should be good to go. And I'm just picking up some items in mid-fight, so that's a little scary, but easy to go. But now we can call our, our uh, sorcerers in to finish the, the game. Uh, beware, your clone is getting damaged while it's there. You can see that its health starting to decay, but they killed their own guy, so that was nice and easy. Now, let's see if our sorcerers can take care of the rest. And so you'll notice that Sometimes they're attacking my 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 units or my pawns. Now, that's not the desired outcome. So that's because my strength isn't high enough right now. So what we want to do is summon and collect them. And so that's where you use our, our suffocating shroud ability. And this one's a really good one in attracting them. And you'll be able to tell that they are attracted to you by their bar showing up. So that, that's how you know that they were attracted to you and you'll be good to go there. So we can pull it here, make sure that we pull that guy in and then try to and when, when they cast something like that, you want to try and get the clone inside the cyclone so they get sucked up, and then they're dead. There's its body flying around, and it'll land somewhere, who knows where. But that's kind of the general way that you play it. And obviously, this was an easy enemy to, to kind of juke out and show this. But uh, harder enemies, or if you get like a lot of goblins, they're all over the place, uh, they can kill your clone pretty quick. One thing to note, if you ever get attacked, if they ever hit you, it also takes away your clone. So you have to be perfect never getting hit throughout your entire playthrough. And that's what's really fun and satisfying is you are you never get touched. If you're really good at it, you just never get hit. Your clone always survives and then you're good to go. So let's go and try and find a more difficult enemy to showcase this. So luckily we found a Griffin that was right next to us. So we're gonna summon our incense and then we're gonna be getting ready to fight. So let's try and draw it in over here. We need to get it off our allies. So we're gonna use that suffocating shroud to try and draw it in. We'll try and get some of these uh, other little guys to, to fight us too show you guys how it's done. But it's it's, it's attacking my clone because it, it saw that, it's attracted to that. I've also got the, one of the harpies on it. Easy day. Ooh, got knocked over, that's cool. My pawns are deciding to jump the griffin. I don't know why. Normally they would uh, summon and do what they're, they're supposed to do. And so you really wanna try and keep your clone as far away from your people as you can. And then you wanna make it so it's dodging their attacks as much as possible. So you kind of want to predict when it, it's going to be making those attacks. You don't want to be standing too close to your clone or they might be hitting you. 
So it's kind of just bobbing and weaving, trying to attract them, get them off of your your pawns. But uh, here we go. They're casting Meteor now. He'll be dead very soon. And so we're kind of just waiting for them to get that. My clone's almost dead, so you have to be, okay, I know that it's got maybe one more auto attack, and then it's gone. Not that it matters, because then the meteors came in and wiped them out. So that's kind of the general way to take out bosses. That was super easy, right? I, I'm really far in the game. I have, like, unlimited health with my clone. My clone survived really well there. I've got a, a fully upgraded Whimsical uh, Daydream, which is one of the better uh, sensors out there, and I have a really good uh, weapon and armor. I'm, like, level 70 or something, so... But that's kind of how you play uh, generally uh, against those kind of enemies. And it will jump into the next ability, which is the Binding Effigy. So this is the ranged version of your uh, regular your enthralling aroma. So now you can throw it a lot further. So hopefully you can, boom, cast it up there. Now it's on that harpy, which is kind of cool. So now the other harpies will attack that harpy. Remember, it's now targeting you. So you got to be able to juke it out. And then, boom, got around it. Give it a little bob and weave and you're good to go. And then hopefully we can get the other one to attack it. So I use that suffocating shroud and kind of just run around in a circle. And you can jump this guy real quick. Oh, I missed him. He got away. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That guy got sucked up by that. We're going to summon our incense again because it did die. Let's try and get this bird inside our tornado. Here he comes and he's done. Easy day. And that's kind of just how you, you play around with the, the uh, Binding Effigy. It can, it's got a nice range. You can send it off uh, into ranged units like those um, Harpies. And uh, yeah, pretty easy way to play there. The next uh, skill I want to go over is Aromatic Rally and Aromatic Resurgent. That, that's the one I have equipped right now. The Advanced Form. Uh, you're going to cast that and it's going to give you all your pawns a big boost in damage. And, and I think it's it's per based on percentage. So uh, bigger, weightier attacks that have a high damage uh, will get a bigger increase than like a small, small damages, which are flat damage. Uh, typically, that that's like a meteor will be just so much more powerful if you use this. Uh, it's, it's substantial. I don't know. It's like 20 to 50 percent damage increase, I think. Something pretty crazy because... Uh, you can take out drakes super easy when you cast this on your allies even at like level 40 i think i could one shot drakes with three sorcerers casting meteors so it is a really cool way now i can one shot a drake with uh, level 70s so it's it's pretty fun to just play that kind of comp but um that is the aromatic resurgence i think that's one of the best abilities all right so the next one we're going to talk about is the elusive divider or the wall creation magic uh you'll just be able to create a wall uh, what's really good is actually stepping inside of it and i'll show you how good that is uh, they just don't know where you are it's really good uh, a lot of times I, at first i was trying to set up like a wall a barrier to stop them from going through sometimes they would so it was like not working but if you actually step inside that's where you find i find the most benefit out of this uh, and then you could cast like uh binding effigy or uh, aromatic uh, aroma and that that can be ways that you, then you just watch as they tear apart their own team so we're going to play against these harpies real quick probably get hit a couple times as i try to get on this platform so there's that let's cast our divider we're now safe all right they won't come for us they can't see us we're inside this wall um and then this is where we can summon our incense so then we have it ready and then we can cast binding effigy on that one boom Cast our Suffocating Cloud. And uh, there's not any other birds around, are there? Oh, there's another bird. Good. Boom, and then they're attacking each other. That's exactly what you want to see. Now, it's just going to get torn apart. And while you're in here, you're, you're pretty safe. But my wall's down, so now it's going to start attacking me again. So that, that's the good thing about having the Elusive Divider, the upgrade. You can have two walls at, at any time. So you can constantly keep casting them and then have unlimited walls. I want to bring that back in, recast the effigy on the next harpy, and then let them take each other out again. And this is the one way you could actually solo whole teams with uh, the trickster class. So you could just keep doing that. Super easy to just keep playing with. And, and honestly, I hate harpies, so this is a really nice way to take care of some harpies. Uh, you, you can set this up while your allies are, are inside the bubble. They're safe while they're hiding in there. Uh, makes it really quite nice to, to just chill. So that is the binding, or sorry, the elusive divider.
The next uh, skills we're going to go over is Fragrant Alarm and then uh, Dragon's Delusion, which is the master one. So uh, this Fragrant Alarm just helps us detect enemies in the in the area. Uh, obviously, we can see there's some around this corner. Looks like a, a whole bunch of little skeletons and then um, some other units. You can try to, to predict what's there and prepare a, a strategy for it. So that's what that one is. Let's cancel that out. Let's... Uh, Summon our guy right here. Oh, we got a, a skeleton actually coming to me. So that's good. We kind of predicted that. Let's pull the team in and let's go to battle. So if they're being, I think they're being summoned. I think there's a, a greater lich. Uh, oh, and we have a pawn in here that's just been fighting. Nice. Oh, there we go. We got a uh, fell lord, which is cool. Oh, and we do have a lich. Um, that's good. Let's pull in our, our guy right here. Let's try to attract all of these guys to us. And then uh, I'm going to show you guys Dragon's Delusion. What's cool about Dragon's Delusion is really good against uh, flying units like this. Um, we can actually use it to knock them out of the air. So it works on griffins, uh, even dragons, I'm pretty sure. But we'll cost this. It'll knock it to the ground. He's scared. Falls to the ground. And now we can really finish him off. Um, we'll add a little aromatic resurgence to boost our, our team. Uh, the Fell Lord's right there, too. We could actually cast this on him. And then maybe the Fell Lord would go attack the, the Lich. We'll, we'll, we'll cast the Dragon and try and knock it on the ground before it attacks me. Hurry, 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 hurry. Oh, but I got hit first. All right, so that's unfortunate. Our Shroud's gone. Oh, and seeing our, our Cloud. Our, uh, shoot, I'm sorry to say. a Our Shadow Clone was gone. So that was not, not great. So we'll pull that there. Let's summon it back on, onto him. Now we can get the Fell Lord to attack its own master. It'd be kind of cool if it works out. Along with all of these uh, skeletons. But I just accidentally summoned my guy to me. That was a mistake. Let's try and knock this guy back to the ground. Dragon's Delusion. Sit down. He got scared. Hits the ground. And then we can finish him off. Look at how much more damage he's doing because of that knockdown. Go ahead and slap him a couple times just because we can. Boom! He's dead. Easy day. Dragon's Delusion, great for some of these uh, more flying units. Alright, so now let's jump into the builds for my Trickster builds. I have two. One is an all-out Trickster, one is a Warfarer. Both will have three Sorcerers. I really do like this three Sorcerer combo. It just is so much fun to just see Meteors and Maelstroms just wrecking and ravaging the field. Uh, this playthrough, all I was playing was Mage and Sorcerer, so I really wanted to just keep capitalizing on that and play through that, and then in my future playthroughs, I'll try and, and address it and ch check out some of the other options. But um, So you're going to have three of those. Have All three have Meteor on and Maelstrom, uh, and then just go with your uh, pawn just all damage, uh, all knockdown, just pure, pure, pure damage, because uh, you're just going to have him do everything, all, all the damage. Um, for our four abilities, I like to have the Suffocating Shroud really make sure we draw them in. They are ours. So they're not going to touch our pawns ever. Um, and you might even want to mail pawns so that uh, the um, ogres don't try and jump you. Uh, next, we're going to have the Binding Effigy. This is nice for just send it at a, at a harpy uh, and then it'll make them fight each other and it's just an easy way to get it off of you uh, those harpies can be really annoying uh, dragon's delusion uh, great for taking down those griffins taking down any liches flying units in general and smaller units it can just scatter them scare them away so that could be just a good one to have in general and an aromatic resurgence is just really nice uh, to make your meteors hit so hard and like i said it's a big upgrade um so that's those for augments uh, i like to augment your magic that way your health on your clone is really surviving uh, if you have unlocked warfare i like to reduce the weight movement speed being able to juke people that's really key as being a trickster uh reducing the stamina when using your weapon skill just to make sure you have it this one you could probably get rid of especially if you want more of one of the trickster augments you'll see i don't use any of those but maybe you want to be able to find all the seeker tokens that's a huge one or you're trying to do uh char charismatic stuff or there's many other um, ones that are really good in fact there's another archer one that i don't have unlocked which uh, augments your pawns attack damage in magic that's a really big one uh, in fact i would have that one over sustainment which i have in currently here which increases their defense and magic defense realistically they should never be getting hit so this should be 
be swapped out for that, but uh, I'm just keeping it in for now. Um, provocation, this is a key one that you want. This increases the chances that they're going to attack you. Uh, just once again, trying to keep them off your pawns as much as you can. In fact, I even wear the ring uh, that also increases how often we're, uh, I'm being targeted. So that's really key. And then we also have the exaltation, which augments your stamina recovery speed. You just want to have that constant uh, recovery. You always have stamina. That way you don't run out because if you run out and then you're trying to cast something, Ooh, you're, you're going to be taken out pretty quick. It's kind of scary. And for my second build, it is the Trickster Warfare build. Uh, really, there's no difference in the way you're going to be playing. It's just adding a whole bunch of utility outside of fights. And so you're going to have to get the Warfare vocation. If you don't have that or don't know how to do it, definitely check out our guide. But you'll be just going down to the Volcanic Isles. There's a gentleman near the baths. Uh, you give him some new liquor. You should be able to get the vocation. You will need to get his master teaching as well, which is rearmament. Um, and then that allows you to switch between all the weapons. And that's super key uh, and useful because uh, you didn't have any healing. You lost your mage. You were doing three sorcerer and a trickster. It's not, there's no utility there. And so being able to switch to a mage staff so that you can heal up your team is super, super useful. So that's one of the key things you can do. And then the second one is having daggers or some other melee item because the only counter to this build is the golem. All right, you cannot finish a golem. Often you'll just be sitting there trying to get that last medallion that stays hidden uh, unless he's cooling off. Oh, it's so hard. You have to perfectly time a meteor to hit that and it's just unlikely that your team is gonna land that. So it's really helpful just to be like, okay, I'm gonna take care of this, switch to daggers, climb on them, stab, 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 take that medallion out, you're good to go. And so that's really all, you, that's the only counter to this comp. Um, and then for your last skill, there's a whole bunch of different options. Um, but the one problem with a trickster is the second that you switch weapons, your clone starts to die as if you were too far from it, like I mentioned earlier. So it's really key to just be able to switch back to your trickster. So you don't want to stay in a different vocation or a different weapon for very long. Um, it is uh, useful, like I said, to have that mage staff so you can levitate. Uh, I also think if you have mystic archer already unlocked you can have that recovery arrow uh, so that you can throw you when your pawns off a cliff switch to it revive them and then jump down it just makes exploration a lot better but yeah really all you need is that suffocating shroud and that aromatic resurgence and you can do everything else uh, it's really quite easy just to buff your pawns and let them take care of it and the the loss of stats from going trickster to warfare are not even really important. The extra magic, uh, the health difference in your, your uh, clone really isn't uh, significant enough to matter and neither is the strength and, and the attraction of your clone. And so that's the warfare one. It's just a lot nicer, a lot more utility to it. So let's start jumping into the different tactics you can implement. And the first one is about learning attack patterns. That, that, that's just key in this game in general, but you're able to use your clone just to like draw their aggro from certain positions, what, what side of the body they're on. So in this case, where we're attacking the dragon, I'm trying to learn how does it really function. So I can pull the clone to the back and I'm like, how, do I, how does its tail swing work? First he looks back, then he whips his tail up in a circle and then hits the ground. So you know if you're in the back and you see that tail going up you need to run so that's just one example you can just leave your clone around not attack and you learn so much the next cool situation you can create with the trickster class is just epic boss battles yeah so here's one example where i got two golems to battle it out and there's orcs all around just trying to to give little hits here and there just so much fun catch it's on his knee we need to back up uh i need to tell my pawns to come here and wait so you can already see the orcs are starting to try and take out his leg. That's hilarious. Let's try and draw him this way a little bit. Ooh, something did some damage there. That's awesome. All right. Let's try and draw it this way a little bit. So you can see my clone's at half health. Doing well. Oh, this golem's loading up an attack. Boom. Lit up these little goblins. They're having a bad day. All right. My, my clone is dead, though, so I need to resummon it. So, pull it around a little bit. Put it on his leg now. Ooh, big hit. The golem, the, the orcs are actually chunking down the golems right here. Ooh, ooh, they're fighting. They're boxing. Let's go. A battle of the Titans right here. Big right hammer. Ooh. Clip, he's frozen. He's stunned from that hit. 
With Dragon's Delusion, you can literally call down almost any flying creature, and that includes when you're riding a griffin, you can summon your little cloud dragon, and you'll knock it to the ground, killing it. Uh, obviously, you're going to die too, or have to use a wake stone, uh, or if you do it over water, you could still get that experience. So one way to easily one shot a griffin. And if you have that whimsical daydream equipped, this is where you get to start playing a little micro game. If you're really good at keeping your clone alive and, and, and controlling the battle, you can just go around auto attacking and eventually you're gonna hit for 50,000 gold. And that just feels really good. And I mean, often, you're only gonna get like 10 gold, let's be honest, but you'll get a hundred, you'll get a thousand every once in a while. And that adds up, like, especially over longer battles. And if you're really good at it, you will continue to make good money. But I've already mentioned my favorite thing about this, and that is just having a three sorcerer comp. We actually get to see those meteors, those whirlwinds flying around. And it's just really quite easy, honestly. Like, like your, your clone is so good at drawing aggro. And once you learn how to like keep pulling it and, and protecting it, it can be super easy to just even take on large mobs. But against single targets like this ogre who thinks he's a big boy, oh, it ends very poorly for them. The three sorcerers bringing it down the rain just absolutely annihilates him. And, and you know, it's just crazy because with this much, they leave nothing. There is literally nothing there. So if you're looking for monster material, this is not the way. And even late game monsters cannot handle three meteors for full, from full build sorcerers. Uh, this Dullaham, which is supposed to only be weak to um, uh, holy damage, it's going to see the damage. Now, I did have to give it a, 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 the aromatic resurgence to give him a little extra boost, but this guy just gets deleted also. And, and I was kind of, this was actually the first time I ever fought him. And I was like, oh man, this guy looks scary. Uh, I have a friend that played Dark Arisen and, and the old Dragon Dogmas. And they said to watch out for these guys. But uh, yeah, they weren't a problem. They were not a problem for me here. And that includes the final endgame bosses. Like this one here, I, I was fighting him. I, he was probably actually the hardest enemy I had the entire game uh, for this comp. Uh, they're using the whirlwinds right now and they're way above at his head. So they weren't really clipping him too well, but they still took down like two bars right there. And then, you know, I switched to, to mage or cause I have that. And so hit it with some high free gores while it's down. But once these meteors come, it, it basically gets just deleted the rest of the way. And then it just takes a little bit more to finish this guy off. Uh, but really this, this combo is just really, really fun and really easy. It just feels good to see powerful magic in a game. That's the end of this guide. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found some fun ways to play the trickster. If you have some cool uh, moves out there that I, I didn't talk about, let me know below. I'd love to hear them. Uh, I'm sure there's some really cool ways to play with this class. Um, and then I'm moving on. I'm gonna be playing as the thief the archer and the magic archer my next playthrough. Comment below on anything that I should know. What is good to play with these uh, classes? I'm super excited to get into it. I'll see you guys next time. Caveman logging off.